So we're back at it today, uh, and today we're going to actually start um, to talk about polymer chemistry, polymerization, and really just kind of give a brief outline. Um, we'll get into the kind of nitty gritty of uh, basically doing condensation reactions, nucleophilic attacks, uh, acyl substitutions, all that good stuff a little bit later on. So um, today's lecture is just to kind of give you a basic outline of the different types of polymerization methods that we're going to kind of, the broad uh, types, the two types that we're going to cover. Uh, in this course, obviously there's a lot more and you could take an entire course uh, that's focused on polymer chemistry, but um, again, that's what we want to focus on today. So just remember from last time, our big kind of takeaways were um, when we think about polymers, they're composed of monomer units. Usually we kind of have that uh, kind of picture right here where we're dealing with some repeat unit N, but in reality, the length of our chain is never, uh, when we produce a polymer, all the chains are not the exact same n of like 100k or 100 or 10,000. Um, there's going to be some distribution. So if there's some distribution in the number of monomers and the degree of polymerization. There's going to be some distribution in your molecular weight. So we looked at number average molecular weight. We looked at weight average molecular weight. Um, we looked at this kind of really critical parameter called the PDI, which is the Poly Dispersity Index, uh, and that has to be basically equal to one or, or basically greater than or equal to one because we know that the number that the weight average molecular mass is always going to be greater than the number average molecular mass or equal to. So we did a couple of problems and examples there. We looked at kind of these definitions of green polymerization. So we have those working forwards. You're experts on that. You could solve any problem dealing with those issues. So today we're going to get into the actual kind of two broad classes of polymerization that we're going to work with in this class. So as most basic level, um, if you link two, poly two monomers together, or at least two monomers together, via chemical reaction, you perform some type of polymerization. Um, I'm going to post a video, and unfortunately we can't do this uh, in person, of interface polymerization of nylon 66. It's a really, really fun demonstration. I really wish we could uh, basically creating nylon rope. Um, I wish we could do this in class or in person, but obviously we're kind of limited what we could do um, <laughs> during this pandemic, unfortunately. And actually, I'll tell you why, if you've done this um, demonstration in Chem 24, why it never worked. And it never worked when I was an undergraduate either, but I think I found the solution. But we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Um, so there are really, really lots of different types of polymerization reactions. We can't cover this in this course because, um, again, this is not a polymer chemistry course, and we're going to cover a lot of different things. Um, but if you're interested in this um, and you're kind of trying to do some type of um, organic chemistry or polymer chemistry, um, I can uh, basically, you could reach out to me and I'll give you some resources in terms of how you want to do this uh, polymerization. So, two broad categories that we're going to deal with. There's going to be chain growth polymerization and step growth polymerization. You kind of see some schematic here. So, chain growth uh, polymerization, this is also called, um, you'll see this a lot in literature called an addition reaction. Reaction. So, Step growth polymerization, on the other hand, will be called, often it'll be referred to as a condensation reaction. I don't like this term condensation reaction. The reason why is um, uh, you see here, the byproduct here is water for, again, one, one, possible, one possible byproduct of a polymerization reaction could be water. But you can see here, it could be HCl, it could be a lot of other um, uh, different kind of byproducts. So I don't like this term, the condensation reaction, because again, it implies that it's only water. So um, we're not going to refer to it like uh, addition reaction, condensation reactions in this course. We're going to refer to it as step growth polymerization and chain growth polymerization. So step growth polymerization, you can kind of see here, you're basically just adding um, one monomer unit, unit onto another and you're extending your chain. You're growing um, kind of your chain monomer by monomer by monomer at a time. Well, we're going to look at a kind of a nice little schematic here in a second. Step growth polymerization you're having these two distinct structural units. So here in your chain growth, you only have one structural unit and you just extend that. So this is very similar. One of the classic examples that we saw here is your polyethylene. So we'll get into we'll get into the exact mechanisms in a second in later lecture or later videos. But this is your monomer unit for polyethylene. So we are going to, with some free radical, we're going to break this double bond, break it apart, and we're going to just keep adding you kind of just keep adding along this chain. So you have this free radical here, and then it attacks another like monomer unit. So that free radical attacks a double bond. So you just keep, so your chain growth starts from one monomer unit, and it disappeared, and it just keeps extending, 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 extending. 
condensation reaction, you have multiple of these kind of different structural units. You combine them together here to form your polymer. So your X, X and Y, you're adding those together. So in condensation reactions, you're kind of forming all these little polymer chains, and then eventually they're going to come and link together. So that's kind of the basic idea that you're, what you're working with here. So for step growth, you're going to produce a new polymer with at least two structural units, and then it'll have one repeat unit. For, um, for chain growth, you're really just dealing with a single uh, structural unit. So um, chain growth is also unique in, uh, because it occurs via three steps. There could be four. We're going to talk about that um, in, a, in a little bit later. Again, once we get into chain growth is going to be the last one that we study. It's a little bit less interesting, a little bit less um, kind of chemistry-wise. Um, well, actually, it's really complicated chemistry-wise, but we're not going to get into it. We're going to focus more on the step growth polymerization, but we'll talk about chain growth uh, a little bit later on. But it uh, basically occurs via three steps. So initiation, propagation, so basically initiating the creation of that free radical or whatever, you know, break those monomer units um, and extend your chain, propagating essentially that chain growth, and then finally termination. You have to stop um, basically where that chain growth ends. So I really like this schematic. So this is kind of a picture of how um, basically chain growth and step growth polymerization occurs, and then it also shows the degree of polymerization as a function of p, the extent of the reaction or time. We're going to get into uh, p and what that we kind of hinted at that already in the last video, but we're we're going to get into it in the next video when we talk about the Carruthers equation. So what's happening here? As you can see, the way that a poly, uh, enduring chain growth a polymer chain is just going to continuously extend. So you see here, the degree of polymerization at short extended reactions or short time, um, equivalently kind of scales, you see how the degree of polymerization shoots up and then finally it kind of slowly, slowly grows asymptotically over time. That's because again, we have one monomer unit in chain growth. So you can imagine we have all these different monomer units, right? Possible. So the way that the chain growth goes is, is just, the chain grows and grows and grows and grows and grows until it attaches and kind of grabs all these guys. So you see the degree of polymerization is initially really high because, again, you're only dealing with one or the number average degree of polymerization. Um, you're only dealing with one. You're basically, you're, you know, all there's multiple chains obviously occurring at one time, but all of your chains essentially have this high degree um, number average degree of polymerization. Step growth, on the other hand, I'm going to switch to blue for once, be consistent. Step growth, we're going to have lots of these different monomer units, right? And they're different, again, two different types, X and Y. What's going to happen in chain growth, or in step growth, excuse me, is these guys are going to combine, these guys are going to combine, these 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 are going to combine. So you see, initially, when you look at the number average degree of polymerization right here, it's really, really low for step growth. But then eventually, you're going to start to connect these dots, and then finally, they're going to start to connect to each other. So this is connected to this guy, this is going to connect to this guy, this is going to connect to this guy, and then it shoots up almost exponentially, and then you have that really, really high degree of polymerization um, in your polymer solution. So those are the kind of key schematic, like the biggest, high, highest level. If, if you don't know anything else about chemistry, you can at least kind of draw this schematic and explain the difference between chain growth and step growth polymerization. And it's key to kind of have this uh, in your mind. So that's kind of the big, 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 big key differences between step growth and chain growth polymerization. So have this picture in your mind, be able to explain this. And if, if nothing else, you'll be able to at least attack a lot of these problems and conceptually understand the difference between these two polymerization routes. Because again, there's gonna be some differences when we, if we want a high degree of conversion, if we want high molecular weight polymers, we're gonna have to think about how these processes occur and how we can modify um, and engineer these processes to achieve the material and the material properties that we want. So step growth polymerization, um, we've talked about chain growth. So let's talk about step growth here for, yeah. Um, so you could see again, this is kind of just explain what we just talked about. So the monomer is gonna disappear very early stages of the reaction. Um, so you see initially, yeah, molecular weight well, is low, but as your degree, as the reaction progresses, so as your extended reaction increases, you get kind of this almost exponential increase because again, those all those different monomer units, all those small polymer chains start to link together, and then you have really, really high molecular weight. Um, so in order to have um, essentially 
really efficient and to achieve high molecular weight um, step growth polymerization, we need to have a couple of things. Exact equivalence of functional groups. Uh, we need to have no side reactions, no monofunctional impurities. Um, we need the exact equivalence of functional groups because we're, we're going to get into that in a second because we need this K equilibrium. Um, your K equilibrium constant, in order to kind of uh, get that high as possible, we need to make sure that we have, um, we're going to introduce a parameter here, the stoichiometric ratio R. Um, we want to make sure that the number of X and Y groups are equal because really an exact equivalence so that these reactions can occur basically in balance. So we're gonna to get to that uh, in just a little bit, but we ideally we want this and this to be exactly the same. In reality, do we really have control over, you know, are you sure that when you measure one mole, you're not, uh, and you have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd uh, particles, are you sure that it's not seven or, si or, <laughs> or five times 10 to the 23rd? No, so in reality, X and Y are never gonna be equal to each other, unfortunately. So there's going to be some imbalance and that's going to, you know, affect the reaction. Very high degree of conversion. Again, this relates to um, kind of, again, your chemical reaction. Um, so we are going to deal with all of that uh, in a later lecture or in a later video coming up very, very soon, actually. Uh, but again, these are some of the polymers um, and uh, actually step growth polymers that we're going to basically build in this course. So you can see there's a lot of step growth polymers that you uh, we're going to deal with and work with. So Kevlar, nylon, um, polyethylene is not one of them. But, um, there are some of these, uh, a lot of these, um, basically esters, amides, carbonates, urethras, ureas. Um, you can all see those right here. These are all going to be some of the step growth polymers that we're going to work with and deal with. So the step growth polymerization is a little bit more fun, a little bit more ubiquitous. Um, but again, there's important polymers, you know, polyethylene. Uh, there's a lot of important uh, chain growth ones too. So step growth, nylon, 6, six um, Kevlar, um, EO. There's lots of different uh, kind of groups. To but for chain growth as well, polyethylene, PVC, that's important, polypropylene, polystyrene, lots of important polymers. We need to know both methods. We need to understand how we can engineer um, and control these chemical processes to achieve the mature properties that we want. So to do that, at least for set growth polymerization methods, we are going to look at a very, very, and derive actually, um, I'm sorry, these are some more functional groups. We saw those last time that you'll use in this course as well. Um, we are gonna derive a critical equation um, that's gonna allow us to control the molecular mass via the extent of the reaction and reactant ratio. So the goal of the next video is we want to develop an equation that allows us to predict the number average or the weight average molecular mass as a function of two parameters, just two, P, the extent of the reaction, and this reactant ratio R, which again, kind of, this is essentially R here. Important, important, important parameter. So we're gonna develop an equation next time where we can predict or control the number average or weight average molecular mass as a function of just these two parameters. Uh, and that is an important uh, equation called the Carruthers equation. So hopefully you've heard about that a little bit before. If you haven't, no worries. We're going to take care of it uh, in the next video. So thanks, and I'll see you all next time. Have a good day. Bye.